Everybody, welcome to Impact Theory. You're here because you believe that human potential is nearly limitless, but you know that having potential is not the same as actually doing something with it. So our goal with this show and company is to introduce you to the people and ideas that are gonna help you actually make good on that potential. All right, today's guest is by the numbers one of the greatest NFL superstars of all time. And his road to superstardom is all the more inspiring because it was a less than traditional path. He grew up in a tiny ass town in Alabama. I looked it up, it is tiny. And while he had a solid high school career, he didn't exactly light the world on fire. He wasn't heavily recruited and didn't even see himself as having a future in the NFL until his senior year in college. But he was hell bent to make the most of the opportunities in his life and prove that with enough desire, dedication, and discipline, you can go anywhere you want to go. And baby, did he ever go. After getting drafted by the San Francisco 49ers, he set about smashing records and making a name for himself. In a world where the average tenure in the NFL is roughly three years, he clocked 15 years, going to the Pro Bowl six times and being named an Associated Press All-Pro five times. With 1,078 receptions, 15,935 yards, and 153 touchdowns, he is virtually guaranteed to be inducted into the Hall of Fame. In addition to his unbelievable success in the gridiron, he's also a best-selling author who's penned an autobiography, a book on fitness, and a successful children's book. Additionally, he's a motivational speaker dedicated to empowering today's youth and a passionate supporter of the cause to eradicate Alzheimer's disease. Please get your popcorn ready and help me in welcoming the man behind the athletic clothing line Prototype 81, the NFL legend, Terrell Owens. <laughs> That's all, man. Thank, thank, thank you so it. much for coming out, man. Thanks, thanks. What a pleasure to have you. Thanks for that intro. <laughs> Dude, my pleasure, trust me. And researching people, so one of my big things, writing the intro obviously takes a lot of research to find all the nitty gritty stuff about people. Right. But in that, Dude, researching you is insane what you've accomplished, especially taking into account what you've said about your own physique, which is, you know, it wasn't about natural prowess, it was essentially about busting your ass to create the physique that you have now and be able to perform at the level that you did. Right. So talk to us about that, about starting out, feeling lanky, not feeling like you could really do what you wanted to do athletically. How did you get where you ended up getting? Man, where do I start? Um, again, as you mentioned in the uh, intro, I mean, I wasn't heavily, heavily recruited coming out of high school, going into college. Um, I was just uh, one of a number of kids on our, on our football team. I played four sports, um, obviously football, but I played basketball, I ran track. And basketball was your first dream, right? Absolutely, it was my first love. And I, I played a little baseball too. Um, so what I didn't, when I didn't play uh, baseball, I ran track and vice versa. So um, for me, it was just, it was one of those things, man, I, as a little kid growing up in that tiny town that you, you spoke of in Alexander City, Alabama, I just wanted to play something, play a sport, just wanted to be active. In the South, fo football is very, very huge. It's a huge sport. That was kind of just a way of the life in, in Alabama or in the South. In junior high, I played defense. I didn't really like that very much. Um, so I liked the offensive side of the ball. So um, transitioned and into high school, played JV, obviously varsity. And I saw a lot of the guys, my peers around me that were far greater, far much better than me skill set wise. And, you know, for me, you know, I wanted to be on the field. I wanted to play. I saw the guys that, you know, I went to class with every day, joked around with, you know, we battled on the football field, we battled uh, in whatever sport, basketball. And I realized that I wasn't playing. And so if I knew, if I, if, if, if I had to motivate myself somehow to get on the football field, how was that going to happen? And so I, I was faced with a lot of self-esteem issues at the same time, being lanky, being picked on. Before now, before I, I knew what bullying was, um, that's what I, that I, I experienced a lot of that, you know. Um, and for me, that motivated me really, it was twofold. I was kind of motivated to get in the weight room because I got tired of getting picked on. Sure. And at the same time, it helped me on the football field um, because I think it was around my sophomore year, going into my junior year, and some of those juniors that were about to turn turn seniors and the seniors that had an opportunity to go go on and play at the collegiate level, um, our coach stood in stood in that locker room, 
in the weight room actually and he basically said if you guys wanted to uh, you know be like these juniors or these seniors uh, this is where it starts um, so that was my motivation in order to feel like I had to you know, give myself an opportunity to make it I knew what that made I, you believe you could change though because I remember when I was in high school and I remember that smell of the iron I didn't have the sense that I could push myself to evolve and change but you did for me being a teenager, I didn't, I didn't really know or realize what I, what I was, what I was doing. Um, all I know is I, I didn't like sitting on the sidelines. You're sitting there watching, being a teammate, watching everybody else make all the big plays, make the big catches. You know, you got the running back making the the, the big plays, uh, big runs, and defensive guys they're making the big hits. You know. I was on the sideline witnessing all of that, wishing I could be in there contributing. Mm. And so for me, in order for myself to, to, to get to that point, I knew that my skill set wasn't where it needed to be. I was tugging on my, my coach's shirt, you know, wanting to get in. But he realized as a coach, and he assessed my, my, my talent at that time, that I just wasn't ready. And for me, that, I, didn't, I didn't comprehend that. All I know is I practiced every day, I worked hard, I wanted, I wanted an opp opportunity to play. And it wasn't until really like my junior, senior year, again, lifting weights uh, during the course of the year, um, I knew that I was undersized. I asked my coach if I could, uh, you know, we had an enrichment period during the course of the school year, where it's like 30, 40 minutes where you could have downtime or extra time to study. And so he gave us an opportunity and he basically notified the, 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 the teaching staff that if we could get a pass to go come down to the to the weight room and, and lift air extra and do some extra stuff, you know, we could do that. And so that's what I did. And my coach that left my high school, he went on to um, explain to the other kids um, when I made it pro that this is these are the things that I did that enabled me to help me uh, get myself bigger, faster, and stronger. Is taking advantage of those opportunities. And so anytime he he said basically he could walk down the walk down the hall or he could be somewhere in the vicinity. And if he heard any weights or anything clanking in there, he knew it was me. So that was really kind of my motivation and my purpose. Uh, and that now, as I really kind of reflect back, you know, after my football career, that's where I got the desire. This is where I really kind of mapped out the blueprint of how I became T.O. And I, I tried to inspire a lot of kids that really have a, a roadmap or a blueprint to, to make it to the next level. They can look at what I did and what I accomplished and give them hope and motivation. So anybody in America, you know, people that are watching, everybody has one of the three Ds that I mentioned. Everybody has the desire to do something, mm. but they don't have that, they, they don't know how to really complete, complete the process of dedicating themselves and having the discipline to do it. And so that's what I try to do when I speak to kids is motivate them and tell them, like, if you got the desire, you got to match, match that desire with your dedication and you got to match it with your discipline. Yeah, I love that. And, and I was blown away reading your um, book on fitness, Finding Fitness, which is an intriguing mm -hmm. title, by the way. Um, but the foreword from Jerry Rice, if I was going to ask anybody to to put the moniker on me as a hard worker, literally of the entire world, who would I want to say I was a hard worker? Jerry Rice, right? That guy's work ethic is legendary. It's insane the punishment that he put himself through and how he was right. able to last for 20 years. That is yeah. absolutely nuts. And he was effusive with his praise of you, your work ethic, how hard you went every day, always pushing yourself. So what, do you, what is it that you tell kids? Because you talk a lot about that blueprint for the next level. Mm -hmm. You clearly had not only the, the desire, but the dedication and the discipline. How did you develop the dedication and the discipline to actually pull it off? So you, you just said it sort of starts a little bit clumsy. You didn't know what you're doing. Um, you've talked a lot about listening to people. How did you know who to listen to, what advice to take, what advice to ignore? What did that process look like? When I played at University of Tennessee at Chattanooga, that's when I started getting a lot of praise from a lot of the, the defensive coaches from opposing teams, um, some of the players um, just started getting recognized throughout the conference of my play. I had a guy by the name of Derek Hall, we went to the same high school. And so he was heavily recruited. That's how I got to Chattanooga because they were recruiting him. Mm -hmm. And so for me, um, 
I just basically took advantage of the opportunities that were given to me. And did you recognize that at the time? Like, hey, I, I, they're coming for him, but I'm gonna crush it, I'm gonna put on a show? I did not know at all. Um, I was just there because they offered me a scholarship. Mm. Um, my mom, you know, she worked, she, we came from a low income family. So for me, that was an opportunity for me is to, uh, you know, gain an education. So football was kind of like, you know, just maybe secondary to me. I'm, I'm in this environment where all my teammates, they were better than me. I was like, man, these guys are super fast or super strong. Mm. It's like, how am I gonna fit in? So I realized at that time that I had to get in the weight room. In order to, to really feel relevant, I had to get on their level. And so those are some of the things I think outside of everything else that I kind of just prided myself in is just really putting forth the effort. For me, I didn't really realize that I was gonna play beyond the collegiate level. I just really had no idea what my future held. And that was just the, the, the motivation for me is just not being average, understanding that if I wanted to be on the level of the peers that were around me, I had to do whatever it took, you know, to, to get on that level. And that was hard work. And you talk about fitness, fitness is almost like, um, it's almost like a relationship. You know, you can't, you can't cheat on it and expect <laughs> it to work. I, I, I took no, sh I took no shortcuts. No, I cut no corners. Again, I, Summertime, I didn't have the means to get back and forth to go home for the summer, so I stayed at I stayed on campus. Um, I took some summer school classes. I was eating ramen noodles morning, noon, and night, bro. <laughs> we didn't have we didn't have a lot. I didn't have a lot of money. I mean, I was doing whatever I could to to make it work. I mean, I was doing you know just running around campus just to keep myself in shape because I knew after my freshman year, I wanted to play more. Um, so those are the things that I did, you know, again, behind the scenes. And that's, that's where that discipline comes in. That's where, I, where it's applicable is because discipline is doing something that nobody else will ever do. And you have to dedicate yourself to that. You have to dedicate yourself to the craft, understanding that there may be some good that come out of it. And you have to prepare yourself. And I, even with my son, I try to tell him the same thing is, you know, he's worried about him, himself not being tall enough or, you know, big enough you know, and, or not getting enough playing time. The only thing that he can worry about and control is the effort that it takes to, to really prepare himself for when the coaches or somebody gives him that opportunity that he's ready, not just mentally ready, but physically ready. Mm. Man, that, I really hope people hear your message because that is so powerful. Honestly, before I really dug in, I assumed that you were sort of a natural physical specimen and, and you know, just leveraged what you had. Obviously leveraged it, right? No one would ever say you were lazy. But I, I had no idea that you had struggled when you were younger and that you really had to mentally prepare yourself. And you said in your book um, that the, it all starts with the mind. And I thought, holy shit, like this guy really understands like how to create greatness. So everything that I've, I've accomplished, man, I, I'm, I'm, I'm truly blessed and honored um, to have been able to compete with the, the best in the world. Um, not many can say that. And so I understand that, you know, my message and, and my path and my blueprint to, to, to make it to the, to the next level can definitely inspire, you know, not just any kid, but anybody, you know, trying to achieve anything in life. Yeah, I love what you're telling your son about the only thing you control is the amount of effort that you put in and you have to be ready when the coach calls because if you're not prepared at that moment, um, then you're not gonna be able to make anything happen. Right. I mean, obviously much has been made about your celebrations and all of that, but when Jerry Rice, who played with you for years and years and years, says he came in humble, he came in hungry, and he worked every day to get better, like that's such, a powerful message. And when I think about, so obviously this show is designed really to help people understand what they need to do. I mean, my, the, the one part of the show that I say every time is that having potential is not the same as doing something with your potential, right? So you had potential, right. but you actually manifested that. You put in the work to, to achieve something absolutely incredible. And making that your mission as an ambassador to youth, I think is incredibly powerful. What is it that you think stops people though from, so they have the desire, right? They've got some level of they want something. Is it that their desire isn't enough? Is it that they don't fuel their desire or the least popular of all, but something I really believe in, they're not angry enough? Um, I mean, 
there are a number of things that come up. Right? There are mental roadblocks. Um, I think a lot of people, um, you know, they set, the, set these goals for themselves and when they don't reach them, then it's discouraging. And sometimes you need somebody to, to push themselves. Sometimes for me, for me, it was self, I was self-motivated. And sometimes other people, they need that little oomph, they need that little push. That's the grind uh, of it all. Um, but you have to look at the bigger picture. Um, you have to have belief in yourself and you have to have faith in yourself. And faith is not really just having or understanding that everything will be okay, but faith is, 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 is understanding that if things don't go your way, or if it doesn't turn out the way you want to, it's still going to be okay. Do you I, think it's going to be okay no matter what, or do you think it's going to be okay if you put in the hard-ass work? Yeah, you got to put in that work and got to understand that it's going to pay off. It may not pay off when you want it to, mm. but that's the beauty of preparing yourself. And that's what I try to tell my son, and I try to, you know, really emphasize, don't worry about things that you cannot control, but the things that you can control that's what you have to manifest because when the opportunity is given to you and you don't step up to the plate and you're not prepared, who's going to be disappointed? Not only your teammates or whoever, whomever gave you that opportunity is going to be disappointed, but you, it's a big letdown to yourself. And now you're starting to play mind games with yourself. Did I do enough? Mm. You know, did I put enough hard work into it? But if you know in your mind that you did everything that you, you, you could do or you did, then nothing else, nothing else really matters. And that's what I did for myself. I understood, like, you talked about celebrations and I got a lot of flack about my celebrations. And now you look at, you know, what's going on in the league, it pales in comparison as far as, you know, how they view things. Um, but for me, I was always being creative. I was finding ways to motivate myself when things kind of got a little bored and mundane. And again, that's that self-motivation. So if I needed something to, to motivate me, you know, every week to get in an end zone, that was me coming up with something creative. With yeah, somebody made a comment about that and I thought, oh my God, that's so smart. Like they actually understood. They said, think about all the creativity he puts into like having the pen in the sock or grabbing the pom-poms or the dance. They're like, he really thinks about this stuff. And they said, but that means he thinks about getting in the end zone. And I Absolutely. thought, you get it. Like you get what he's doing. You get like, this is an obsession for this guy. Like, and this is something that dr drives me crazy. So you talk about self-motivation, you talk about like really making sure you're prepared. I don't know how to explain that to people. Like I don't know, like you, so physically I am I am not going to be competing <laughs> in the NFL anytime soon, but mentally I was the, the same as you, right? So I didn't show early signs of promise. I wasn't right. from a business perspective heavily recruited. Like there was nothing about me that anybody was gonna say, wow, that guy's really gonna go on to do something. But I was really fucking hungry, right? So I had, you wanna talk about desire, I had desire. I always right. knew I was gonna be successful. I just didn't know how I was gonna pull it off. But when I go to explain to people about and people have said that you play angry, and I don't know if you'd agree with that, but I actually like that description. Oh yeah, you gotta play with a chip on your shoulder. So in terms of the creativity, the things that I did that I came up with, a lot of it had to do with the confidence. Again, it's that self-motivation, but it was self-confidence at the same time too, to go out and pull off some of the things that I did. Some of it was uh, premeditated and some of it was, was, uh, was impromptu. Sure. Um, for example, the, the Sharpie, you know, that was literally on the spot impromptu. That wasn't planned um, except for right the, the series right. before, I, before I went out there. Yeah, I, I love that stuff. I think it's super entertaining and I, I know that you've caught a lot of fly for it, but anyway, I love just the obsession with getting in the end zone. And what I love about the things that have really pissed you off or upset you is that you've ended up leveraging it. And you've said, you know, look, I've played through pain. I've played through people not believing in me. I've played through hate, all of that. I find that adversity does one of two things to people. It either breaks them Maybe and they go on to do nothing <laughs> or people who understand how to leverage that. And I, um, I recently did an Instagram post and I said, I, I am motivated by beauty and rage in equal measure. Right, it is, there are things that I'm purely just moving towards, right? Like I wanna bring something beautiful to the world, I wanna help people, I wanna show people how to have impact in their own life, on the world, whatever, like that's, I'm moving towards something that's beautiful. But there are other times where either I have a sense of inadequacy in myself that I just won't tolerate from myself in myself, and then there's times where people doubt me, um, hate on me, whatever the case may be, and you can leverage 
that as well to go on to do something. As somebody who never got in trouble off the field, clearly you found a way to leverage that. What I was doing is being creative. So when I'm in, an, in, an, in that type of environment, you know, having to sit, sit out a whole week and listen to all the naysayers, the negative things that, that were being said about me, I didn't allow that to deter who I was and what I could do on the football field. Um, I understood that if I went out week in and week out, no matter whatever the situation or scenario was, if I went out and I played poorly, knowing that all these commentators, these analysts were saying all these things, you know, really, really testing my character, really digging at my character, I knew that if I went out there and I played poorly, that was going to only validate what they were saying about me. To put a fine point then on, on how to leverage anger, would you say that it's a fair assessment that anger is the thing that lets you do that one more rep? Absolutely. Watching TV, listening to all the, the analysts, you know, really just talk bad about me. I remember those things. Those are the things that drove me to do or get up and work out. My trainer had to tell me that I couldn't train anymore. <laughs> Because I had, he told me that my body needed rest. And when I did have an injury, getting on top of it right away um, with cutting edge technology, even when I went to the Super Bowl, you know, nobody had ever really kind of heard of the hyperbaric chamber. Um, these are type of things that, you know, uh, from, my, from my trainer introducing me to a homeopathic person um, that basically enabled me to, to, to get back on that football field in like six and a half, seven weeks. Yeah, crazy with screws and a plate. Right, two screws ankle. and a plate. Doctors across the country. It was I was the talk of the Super Bowl at that time. Um, for for two weeks leading up to the Super Bowl, was was I going to be ready? Right. Um, How do you my, play through pain? Like, yeah. what do you what do you have to do to yourself psychologically to to get out there? Because it wasn't like you were completely healed. But I had to mentally trick myself that I was healed. Um, I had enough faith in, 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 in God above that, number one, I was going to be able to play um, and I was going to be able to go out there and perform on top of that. So to really mentally block everything out, knowing that I wasn't 100 percent, I had to tell myself, you know, I was 100 percent. And I think certain athletes get into that mental uh, matrix. and There's nothing that anybody could do to, to, to stop you. Now, do you use affirmations? I know you mentioned them in your book on fitness. Yeah, I mean, I'm always really just trying to stay on edge. Um, whatever I need to do to, 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 to keep that competitive edge, then I do it. Um, What's something that you repeat to yourself right now? Um, I think for me, it's just really growing up in the South and hearing, hearing my grandmother say, you know, that, you know, she, she, she recited, she recites the scripture, uh, Philippians 4.13, you know, that I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And, and that, that rings loudly in, in, in anything that I, that I face with. Um, How do you translate that into work, though? Because you've always been somebody that the, the rubber meets the road with faith, right? That faith isn't sort of an abstract concept. You always put it into tangible practice. So how have you translated that into like work? So it's a little maybe more obvious with football, right. but like with Prototype 81, your clothing line, having done a clothing line, I know how hard that is. <laughs> well, this is like you just said, it's, it's hard. There's a lot of, a lot of work, a lot of details. Um, and it's- A every... lot of details doesn't quite cover. I mean, it's, it is insane. <laughs> right. Like when I heard that you were involved in picking fabrics and all of that stuff, and you've been very generous about acknowledging your designers and all that, yeah. but like I know the just obscene amount of details that it goes. Like you have to decide zipper style, right? Yeah, Who you- thinks about that? Right, you- Stitch style. It's understanding what you're engulfing yourself into. Do you treat it like you did football? Like the- Absolutely, the, There's, there are things that are synonymous with football that I, I use in, in, in the fashion industry. And so- What are a couple uh, of those? That, that's just really understanding and trying to perfect the craft. Um, you think about all the brand designers that are out there, think out, outside of the box, they don't think uh, of the norm. And that's how I was when I was on the football field. 
So having to educate myself on the different types of uh, the different types of fabric has been awesome. I've been in the fashion down in the fashion uh, district on Eighth and San Pedro, Santee, like you know, understanding what two-way fabric is, four-way fabric. Um, spandex, polyester. So walk us through that, because it doesn't have to be fashion, right? It can be anything. And you've talked about spending 45 minutes a day to, to really mm -hmm. learn something every day to put in that work mentally. Mm -hmm. What is the process? Because right now, somebody watching this, they have the desire. They know what they, they want to do something with their life, right? But they don't know how to learn about that thing. They may not even know that that's what stands between them and being successful is learning. How did that process go for you in fashion? Uh... It wasn't easy. It was just a... Uh, start with a book? A web page? Like, no. I, I kind of just jumped right in. It wasn't me going to, you know, to some store, you know, I'm grabbing some fashion book and starting to, you know, flip through it. I'm like, how do I become a fashion designer? Or, you know, how do I get, you know, how, to be, how do I get engulfed into this industry? I kind of just learned. I was kind of just thrown into it. As a receiver, you know what you're trying to do to become better at that position. In the fashion industry, it's it's not so clear cut. Um, it's all about just trying to find your, your, your identity. What can you do in the fashion industry to kind of set yourself apart? Yeah, I love what you said about educating yourself through the process. Mm -hmm. So continuing on with your process of education, how do you pick the books that you read? Uh, I'm not a real book reader, um, but again, I'm, I'm, I'm big on sometimes on quotes. Sometimes I'm, I'm going through people's Instagrams or I may see something uh, on a wall. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll screenshot it. And what do you do if something really hits you, a quote? Do you write them down? Do you repeat them, try to use them? Like, how do you yeah, make it? I try, to, I, I try to utilize them um, at some point and I'll apply it to whatever it may, I may be going through. Or I may use it to maybe, if it's not for myself, use it for somebody else it could definitely help somebody else because I feel like sometimes in order for it to resonate with me, then there's some type of connection there. And I understand that there are a lot of people that want to know or want to be, you know, T.O. the receiver. Mm -hmm. And along the way, I've used a lot of people's information uh, to help me get to, who, get to where I, I was and, and, and where I am. Um, it's just not, it's, you know, sometimes people say it's self-made, but somebody has helped that person along the way or given them that push that, 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 no, that normally they probably wouldn't have gotten or they just maybe have been in the right place at the right time. And for me, I know that it was really the right people at the right time for me. Um, and, and I think I've been inaccurately portrayed in terms of uh, who I am as a person. And that's what really fueled me and motivated me to go out there and prove everybody wrong on the football field. Um, everybody has that motivation. You don't want to be um, pegged or be put into a negative light for, for, for anything. Um, things happen. That's just part of life. And it's how you react or respond to those things um, and how you eliminate uh, the mistakes and the mistakes that are being made. How you make good on those? How do you better yourself and try to minimize those mistakes going forward? That, that's applicable to not only just sports, but just life in general. What techniques do you use now to better yourself? It's, I, I think it's easy for people to understand when it's a sport, you go out, you work out, um, get faster, watch tape so that you're really learning about the game and your opponent. But what are you doing now? Like how, how is that process of getting better as it relates to like what you're doing in fashion? I think just being patient and not really reacting. I think in that, that comes with maturation. That comes with, you know, becoming older and wiser. Um, there are things now that, that have happened that I just don't react to, um, you know, and I find a better way to respond and do you think about it in terms of like, okay, this is my goal. So it, watching, so the nice thing about researching somebody for an interview is you get to see their entire life condensed, right? So over the last couple of days, I've watched, you know, a 15, 20 year career, like crush down. And I see you go from the brash entertainer, crushing it on the field, not afraid to the, I love the interview that you did in your driveway where you're doing the sit-ups and lifting. I mean, just absolutely hysterical. Two, now where it's, you see somebody being really strategic and saying, I'm tired of being misperceived. 
So I'm going to take control of my narrative. Much like you're telling your son, the only thing you can control is the effort that you put in. The only thing you can control is how you react, right? And there's right. that wonder, I forget if it's um, who said it, but there's that gap between the stimulus and response, right? And, and who you are exists in that. And you get to decide how you're going to react. And I see you really shaping a new vision for um, how you want others to perceive you, which I think is going to free you up to be successful in, in a whole lot of areas. What did that strategy look like as you began to put it together? Well, it's a little different. Uh, in football, I could really take my anger out on, on an opponent you know what I mean? <laughs> uh, versus, you know, uh, in the fashion industry, you know, if I tried to do that, then that's only going to tarnish. You know, <laughs> that's only yeah, going to tarnish. A big hit probably not right. go well. Yeah. Right. It's going to tarnish, you know, what I'm trying to establish with the brand. So I think everything that I've been able to establish for myself from a brand standpoint, um, and I try to embody um, everything that it has taken me to be successful in football. I try to embody that and I try to apply it to um, in a more strategic way in the fashion industry. My clothing line, again, uh, it's going to kind of reflect, you know, some of that flamboyancy um, that I showed on the football field. It's going to be able to stand out, uh, be able to stand alone and, and, and differentiate itself um, with what's out, what's out there in the market. And, and, and in order for me to accomplish these things, um, there are people that, that are helping me along the way. Yeah. Do you consider yourself a good listener? Yes. I mean, I think a lot of people um, feel like they're good lis listeners. Um, and I think that the difference between uh, a good listener and uh, a person that listens is, is someone that really kind of listens to understand versus listening to respond. That's interesting. You get what I'm saying? I do, yeah. But there's a, I mean, do you it, listen to respond or understand? Now, I mean, back in the day, I probably was listening to respond. That's, that's, I think that's very instinctive. For anybody, if you're going through any type of situation, a lot of people, they just, they listen and they're not, they're listening, they're hearing the person talk, but they're really waiting for that person to finish <laughs> so they can respond. Not really understanding mm. where that person is coming from. Yeah, you have a real self-awareness about that, which as an entrepreneur is, is just one of those absolutely critical things that you have to have is the ability to um, know what works best for you. How much do you think about, um, about self-awareness, about trying to figure out sort of yourself and, and what works for you, and how much do you try to change it if you're not happy with your sort of natural state? Well, I think for me, I know in terms of understanding what I was trying to accomplish with football, I understood that I wasn't as good as I wanted to be, but I could be better. I mean, you always hear that cliche, you know, get better every day. Mm. You know, I want to get better. But you have to believe it. You have to want to really get better. That's why I, I, I keep talking about those, those roadblocks. It may not happen at the moment that you want it to, but you got to understand the process. Everybody wants it yesterday. If that was the case, then there'd be a lot, lot a lot of great athletes um, that that have played in the National Football League, but there's only a so there's so few that make it, and there's so few that become great. I never really thought of myself as as being a great receiver. I'm like top three in the National Football League. Back in '92, coming out of high school, it was it wasn't even a thought. I didn't, I mean. And you it, attribute that to the process? Working, building? Brick yeah, it's just, yeah, taking advantage of the opportunity. And you got to recognize those opportunities when they're in front of you. Um, I just been really fortunate, really, to have, you know, it's one thing that, you know, really kind of believe in yourself, but really to genuinely have people that believe in you too, that can take somebody through the roof. Every athlete, I'm sure, at some point in their life, they're going to have those doubts. But you can't let those doubts overcome or overwhelm the really the bigger picture. 
And that's with anybody. You just got to realize what your weaknesses are. If somebody criticizes you, take it as a constructive criticism. And that's what I had to do too. That's awesome. I love what you talk about the process. Like everybody wants it yesterday, but it's the process. The process is what turns Terrell into T.O. It's the process that lets you go from basketball to football superstar. It's the process that lets you go from you know, underdeveloped rookie to one of the greatest wide receivers of all time in the NFL. It's the process, man. That's so awesome. I love that. And then you just got to have fun with the process too. You got to understand that it's not going to be easy. People think that it's that there's no challenges. Again, people want it yesterday. Mm. And that's the beauty of becoming successful is looking back on it, knowing what you've gone through and appreciating the success and the process. Otherwise, it's, it's literally like you're going to a job. And I literally tried to have fun with it. And that's when I started to become very, very creative. And I, tried, and I was very, very confident. And, it's, and when I say that the media inaccurately portrays me as being arrogant or egotistical, it's because they didn't understand me. And so for me, it wasn't for me to go out my way to try to make people understand who I, who I am. It's up to you or the individual to process the other person. So for me, I understand that you know sometimes people have a committed understanding of who you are and they don't wanna go away from that. Mm -hmm. And so the saying perception is reality, in my case, perception is not reality because what people saw and how they view me or see me now from what they've heard is not who I am off the football field and as a person. That uh, makes a lot of sense, man. So what's the impact that you want to have on the world? Me now is really taking what I've been able to, to, to build for myself, establishing a brand, an identity uh, for myself, uh, enabling, you know, kids that, that look up to me uh, to, to understand what it takes to, to, get, to get to that next level. Um, again, it's so crazy that we're in a world where everything is at your fingertips in terms of technology. So there really shouldn't be any excuse as to why you fail because everything is accessible. I, I, I'm an ordinary guy that have done some, definitely some extraordinary things. So I know that literally if, if, honestly, if I can make it, anybody else can make it if they apply themselves. And it's not, sometimes it's not gonna be easy. You know, as a little kid, you know, as a teenager, I, I had a lot of self, like I said, self-esteem issues. I was bullied, picked on. I mean, I got beat up, didn't have, didn't have any girlfriends, no girls <laughs> liked me. Like, these are things that, you know, people on the outside world really probably don't understand that I went through real life things. My desire was just like anybody else's, but what set me apart was I dedicated myself and there was a discipline to me to do the things that guys don't do. They just don't sacrifice. And that's what I did throughout the course of my career. And what an amazing result that knowledge and all the sacrifices and everything had I mean it's just an unbelievable career man I just love the notion of the process I think that's amazing just Terrell thank you so much for joining us man. man thank you man pleasure Appreciate to share it. that absolutely with us. And, and Terrell where can they find you online online yeah uh, my, my clothing line it'll be coming out next month um, right now we have the landing page up you can go to prototype81.com um, and where should they follow you socially? Social media wise, uh, whether it's Instagram, Snapchat, um, Twitter, it's at Terrell Owens. It's all one word. And obviously on Facebook, you can find me. Um, I got a lot of Facebook friends, so you have to be accepted. So, you know, just, just shoot me a message. I'll get to you. <laughs> All right, guys, I hope you were paying attention to that episode. I know that I was, and the key takeaways that I got from him, this man is a sponge. He truly learns, and when Jerry Rice says that you put in the work, you know you put in the work. The concept of the process and being willing to accept that 
it's going to take time that you're going to have to put in the work. You have to recognize where your shortcomings are and develop that and look at that and really be able to stare nakedly at where you're deficient. Understand what your goal is and the things you need to do to accomplish that and then just grind it the fuck out. That's what I love is this guy is not your all-American natural born athlete who shot out of the womb running a 40 at unbelievable time. He had to build himself up. He had to become something. And it was brick by brick that he really turned Terrell into T.O. It is one of the most fascinating tales of actuating your potential I've ever heard. It is unbelievable. Watch this again. Listen to the things that he gives. His answers were surprising to me because from a distance, when you look at this man, it seems the prototypical story of God-given talent. But as you look closer, what you realize is it is the prototypical story of hard ass work. And that inspires me. I hope it inspires you guys to figure out what it is you need to do to accomplish what you guys want to accomplish. Terrell, thank you so much for Absolutely, joining us, man. Appreciate what an absolute pleasure. Guys, please give it up. Terrell Owens. Thank you. All right, guys, it is a weekly show. As you know, if you have not yet, be sure to subscribe. We're trying to get as many amazing people like this as we can to come on the show and reveal their secrets to us all. And also, until next time, my friends, be legendary. Take care. All right, guys, thanks for joining us. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for joining us for another episode of Impact Theory. If this content is adding value to your life, our one ask is that you go to iTunes and Stitcher and rate and review. Not only does that help us build this community, which at the end of the day is all we care about, but it also helps us get even more amazing guests on here to share their knowledge with all of us. Thank you guys so much for being a part of this community. And until next time, be legendary, my friends.